Welcome to the Supplement Engineer Podcast. My name is Robert Shinetsky. Today, we're fortunate enough to have the owner and founder of Apollo Nutrition, Mr. Robert Samborski. Thanks for being on the, the podcast today, Robbie. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. Thank you. So uh, I always like to start these with getting kind of your background and what, what led you to start Apollo. And so what's your history within the industry and how did you get to the point where you started the brand? Um. Uh, I owned a pollen gym for the past 10 years and, uh, you know, we're very, very popular with, uh, with obviously with the industry in terms of bodybuilders, powerlifters, et cetera. And, um, we sell a lot of protein shakes at the gym <laughs> and, con- and considering that I used to do contest preparations for athletes before I went back to Muay Thai and all that, um, um, obviously I know a thing or two about quality. And uh, the prices just kept rising in terms of uh, whatever we were selling at the gym at the time. And uh, I talked to Mark Glazier from NutriBio, who was uh, actually extended an offer to help me out and get like a small amount of product that I can formulate myself Mm -hmm. uh, to sell at the gym. And uh, the whole idea was obviously just to sell at the gym, you know, to our to our members, to our customers who would stop by and buy shakes and stuff like that. And that's how it started and kind of, uh, you know, snowballed. And that's it. Fantastic. Um, now, when you said you did contest prep, was that for physique athletes or was that more MMA fighters and combat athletes or powerlifters, uh, bodybuilders? Uh, I would say mostly bodybuilders. I mean, back in the, well, back in the day, it sounds like I'm really old. But uh, – <laughs> No, uh, I used to I used to judge NPC shows and uh, primarily do contest preparations for athletes, uh, mostly local, a uh, couple of pros. So uh, I was involved, very involved with the industry, within the industry. Um, and then basically I stopped and, and, you know, and moved on to other things, which led me back to bodybuilding industry and supplement industry. And I guess you never can escape uh, what you meant to do in the first place. No, no doubt about that. Now, uh, Apollo Gym has gotten a, the the reputation for being a hardcore, like a lifters, lifters kind of gym. Um, you know, what got you into the gym industry, and how long has that? How did that kind of take off? Because that's known as one of the top ten, you know, hardcore heavy hitter gyms around the country. Um, I moved to New Jersey about fourteen, fifteen years ago, and basically, I used to do contest preparations from Apollo Gym. I used to work here as a independent consultant as an independent personal trainer and I was running my personal training business from here and uh, I loved the gym ever since the first day I stepped my foot into it and um, when the opportunity came and the owner was selling for whatever reason I jumped on it even though I didn't have any money and uh, you know the rest is history I guess. Perfect okay now so then you started Apollo what were your goals with starting up the brand, you know, what was, I guess, your kind of your mission statement or purpose for starting the brand when there's, you know, thousands of other companies out there? What made you say, I can do this better or led you to want to start the brand at all? This might come off a little cocky, I guess, but uh, it's it's not my intention. I knew that I can do a better job than anyone else. I knew hmm. it. I mean, I knew that uh, 90, 95% of the products on the market are absolute garbage. I mean, that's a fact. And Again, uh, you're the expert in the field, and you can attest to it just as well as I can. Um, but I knew I can do the job. I knew that I knew exactly what the athletes want. I knew mm-hmm. exactly what was lacking. I knew that in order to get a certain product, I had to get different ingredients and kind of like mix my own thing because there was nothing on the market, or not much at least, in terms of to deliver exactly what I wanted and exactly what I needed more than I wanted it. Uh, in order to prepare for a, for a contest, for a fight, for for whatever. I mean, you know, um, there are certain ingredients and certain amounts that our bodies need. And uh, when everything on the market is proprietary bland and mostly shit, uh, <laughs> you know, obviously it's, it's, it's a huge problem. It's a gap. So uh, um, I knew that I can do a better job than, if not everyone, than at least most. But at the same time, um, I had absolutely zero aspirations to go into the field of uh, supplement industry Mm -hmm. and to go into stores and sell online, et cetera, et cetera, and go global or whatever you want to call it, Um, mostly because I'm lazy. Um, I don't like to work too much. (laughs) And, and, and And to me, that was a shitload of work trying to convince 
people uh, every job that you know what our products are better so when you that a pawn crowd is definitely gonna they gonna be our customers that's gonna be our core and uh, again absolutely zero aspirations to go anywhere else so the idea if you implying from the beginning that I wanted to go into a supplement industry no it was mostly you know let's do it for our gym for our three four hundred members at the time but I had no idea that you know we're gonna be in stores and a pollen gym is gonna go from three four hundred members to fifteen hundred members and be what it is today I wow. I didn't I didn't see that happening no I no you that's that's tremendous growth I mean you Quadruple or quintuple your uh, yeah, and I, I know that are a lot of people, you know, they have business plans and they go in and they plan, okay, we can do this, we can do that. My team is exactly the same team as it was three years ago when we started. We didn't do anything different. Yes, right now we're getting a sales rep on board. Yes, right now our aspirations are different. And now I'm willing to compete because I know that I can beat most of them. And, uh, I know that we can rival some of the best companies producing some of the best products on the market, and I know that we can definitely rival them. I know we can definitely compete with the best and probably come on top most, most of the time. So right now, my vision and my goals have changed. Now I actually want 10. Now I want part of the industry because I know what I can do. Right. Now, when, you, when you're trying to, you know, say, take down the competition, do you have a certain, you know, four or five companies that you're looking at that you've got on your radar, or is it I'm just – going to be the best that I can. I mean, do you do you measure yourself against other companies or is it more of just kind of a a personal drive to be the absolute best? I I always was a type of like uh, I'm not going to name the companies that I think are shit. I'm just going to say if you have a proprietary blend product, uh then in my opinion you are shit. Uh so whoever falls into that category than they do. I mean, that's just my personal opinion mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure it's shared by many. In terms of to give credit to the good companies, uh, whether or not uh, we are friends or competitors or whatever it is, um, I give credit where credit is due. I mean, uh, Nutribio comes to mind. It's a great company. Mark did help me out, and I always give him credit for whatever, you know, happened with the pawn. He was the first one to give me the push, Mm -hmm. and uh, I'm very grateful to him for that. Uh, There is uh, Jim, Jim Stefani. He has great products. I mean, I think that uh, some of the best products are actually – by the gym brand um so there are a couple of companies like that that i give my respect to nevertheless i think we can compete with them i think we can compete for the same market and i don't think we're going to come second we maybe don't have as much power as they do in terms of you know the size of the company and uh, what our resources are but uh, we are constantly and organically growing and uh, in terms of product quality i think we're definitely not below them but uh we keep growing we keep getting the best that the pawn can be and uh, i'm just competing with myself i always competed with myself Mm -hmm. i will be very very upset if the company will do the same numbers as we did last year i want to do better than last year and if we do better than last year which we already are doing then next year we have to suppress this year that's that's my competition my only competition is me i always want to get better in whatever i do I don't think about others because, you know, they should think about me. They should think about their goals, their aspirations. I cannot control them. I cannot control the product that they release. I can, I cannot control the marketing strategies. And I, I just don't worry about them. I worry about us. I couldn't have said it better myself. I'm, I'm much the same with the just pursuing goals. It's, it's never been because somebody else has told me to do something. It's because I've wanted to push myself to do things as much as possible to the fullest extent possible. Um, so it's, it's, that, that's probably one of the reasons we get along so well. We, we share a lot of the same ideals. Thank Um, you. And I agree. It's, it's a compliment. Thank you so much. And so, uh, yeah, I would agree that Mark and Jim have definitely led the way with the open labels and trying to fight the stigma that is proprietary blends, which I wish would go away. And it, it seems that we're trending that, but just when you think that, there comes a host of prop blend products and it just keeps, you know, miring down the, the quality of the supplement industry. But I think where you guys shine most is you've got some hardcore products. You go more after the combat athletes and the, the guys that are willing to push the envelope in terms of stems, stem load, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but I think that that's a unique position for where Apollon is, is the, the hardcore athlete, whereas Nutribio touts the, 
the full open label disclosure, clean, super clean. And Jim, Jim is open label, but he's, I, I feel like he's a little too high on himself sometimes when he's talking and doing his little commercials for bodybuilding.com and whatnot. Well, that's my, uh, that's, that's where we're getting, I guess, personal. And I've never, I mean, I've met, I've seen him, um, mm-hmm. at the Olympia Jim Stepani, but I never personally talked to him. Do I, uh, agree with his way of marketing? No, I don't. Uh, do I think he's a little bit too much for my taste? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, does he have good products? Yes, he does. No yeah. doubt about that. I would I'll agree with that. that. Uh, but at the same time, who am I to say that, you know, uh, um, to tell him how to run his business or his marketing strategy? The guy obviously is very, very successful. God bless him. I'm happy for him. Um, at the same time, it's still not my style. It's still not something that I will ever do. And uh, it's not the way I will conduct myself because it just goes against my principles. And while we all want to be successful, we all want to make money and uh, it's absolutely natural and that's the way it should be. But at the same time, I think that the day I'm going to be somebody I don't like and maybe a little bit easier, especially, of course, with something like pre-workout that we have. But no, we're going to stay exactly who we are. I'm going to stay exactly who I am. I'm not going to model myself after Jim Stepani just because he's successful. Mm-hmm. I give him credit. But at the same time, it's not somebody I am. It's not somebody that I look up to and never will. Excellent. Uh, all right. So I'm going I'm to ask the the question with the elephant in the room. How in the world did you formulate or come to formulate a product with 600 milligrams of caffeine? That uh, is, I mean, that's... That's double the amount that are most, most hardcore pre-workouts. They call themselves, you know, it's a three to three fifty range. And you said, screw that. I'm going double at 600 milligrams. So what was going through your mind in that instance? Uh, you know what? I looked at the couple of pre-workouts and in my opinion, when you release something on a market, uh, you cannot copy others. I just don't think that you should be copying others because we so we see so many copycats, similar labels, similar products, similar this, similar that. I mean, with proprietary blend, it's pretty much the same shit all over the place. But uh, when I looked, actually, I looked at uh, at Jim Stepani's pre-workout, and I actually tried it, and I thought, well, this is a pretty good pre-workout. And then I gave it to a couple of people at my gym, at a palm. And uh, I let them try, and they liked it, but they were not that impressed. The reason is because we're talking about bodybuilders, we're talking about powerlifters, we're talking about elite athletes and hardcore individuals, and to them, um, it's just not enough. They can double scoop that. They can take two scoops of that, and they handle it pretty – I mean, they okay. I mean, hell, they can do hooligan two scoops. So it's, it's pretty impressive, exactly. So, um, you know, I was thinking that, you know what, what, what do they want? They want the pump. They want the energy. They want sustained energy. They want something that's going to give them that boost, that drive, that kick. And uh, in terms of, like, uh, putting caffeine in a side, I mean, you've seen Hooligan. You've tried it yourself. Mm-hmm. Even without the, without the caffeine, it's a very, very, very solid formula. It's pretty complete formula. I mean, um, that's probably as close as it gets to perfect. Uh, it gives you the pump, it gives you the drive, it gives you the focus, it gives you everything. So the ingredients are solid. Now we're talking about caffeine. Um, certain people can handle it. And if, you know, 5 10% out, out of the entire market can handle hooligan, then it's our market. That's our people. And we market to those people we market to those who can handle that much amount of caffeine Mm -hmm. we market to those people that do have that i don't know need drive necessity that uh, could benefit from that much caffeine Uh, because let's face it what's the limit we don't know what the limit is you know our bodies can Mm -hmm. can take maybe for somebody 100 to 200 milligram of caffeine is sufficient but there are others who can handle not only 600 but way above that don't forget that a pawn has, besides the athletes, that uh, do take pretty much whatever it takes in order to, you know, to succeed mm-hmm. or to improve their performance. You have also at a pawn a lot of police officers with sleepless nights and the ones who drink a lot of coffee. So for them, an average pre-workout with two, three hundred milligram of caffeine is not going to do shit. 
that's just a blip on the radar for them. You know, so they can they can take hold again. And for the, for the ones that can not take it, well, you know, use half a scoop or use the whole again uh, bare knuckle non stem version. So mm-hmm. we give them options. They can they can they can do half a scoop of each, and then you have only three hundred milligram of caffeine. So we got a lot of attention because of that, and uh, um, both positive and negative. The positive, well, thank you. You know, I, I really think that we have a great product. The negative, um, I really don't give a shit, to be honest. You know what? <laughs> if you don't like it, use something else. You can use half a scoop and don't use the product at all. We don't target the ones who are buying proprietary blend cheap products. Uh, we target and we provide service to those who can handle the 600 milligram and to those that want only the best. And I do believe that we have some of the best products on the market. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, it's the dosing is is fantastic on there. You're getting six grams of citrulline malate on there, a full gram of agmatine. You're getting taurine. Everything's dosed, you know, extremely well. So, I, from a from a hardcore pre workout standpoint, it's it's the most complete hardcore pre workout that you know I've I've seen that I can think of because most of them it's you know it's 600 or you know 400 500 milligrams of caffeine, and then there's not much else to it. It's a bunch of crack and stim powders, and that's about it. But you managed to, I guess, get everything, and you've got the massive amount of energy, but you've got focus, pumps, performance, all of that with it tied in, and it's all transparently dosed too. Absolutely. So, how has the um, what is next on the docket for y'all? So we've got Hooligan, and you just recently released Hooligan Bare Knuckle, which is the stim free version of that. So you're getting a lot of the same elements that are in Hooligan, but it's just without the the 600 milligrams of caffeine in it. Correct. Well, the thing is, is that uh, we had uh, um, what I noticed with Hooligan Bare Knuckle, the non-stem version, is because of two grams of Hydromax, it tends to clump, obviously. Mm -hmm. So that is something that, although it's not a problem because it's just uh, what it does, so, you know, but at the same time, it kind of got under my skin, so now I'm looking to eliminate that uh, problem. So uh, next version of uh, Hooligan Bare Knuckle is definitely going to clump less. And you and I already talked about it, so I know how to improve on that. Uh, the next version of Hull, again, we have three versions so far. And with every version, we constantly made it stronger and better. Mm-hmm. And the next version of Hull, again, which is going to be released in 2019, it will be stronger. It actually will be stronger, and it will be better version of the one that we have right now. And I know a lot of people would be like, how the fuck can you improve on the 600 milligram yeah. caffeine? <laughs> but... Uh, you know, um, we can and we will. And uh, the formula is pretty much already done. And it's only a matter of a couple of months where it's going to be released. And that's it. Excellent. Uh, yeah, regarding the uh, clumping issues in bare knuckle, I guess you could probably either try a, a monosteroid or go for the glycer pump, which has been, from what I've seen, has less clumping issues than Hydromax does. Yes, correct. And that's pretty much what we're going to use in our next version. Uh, so basically one's going to release, uh, replace the, uh, the other one. Mm-hmm. And, uh, it definitely helps with clumping. Like I said, it doesn't make the product bad. It just, uh, creates a certain level of uh, discomfort that you have to deal with. Mm-hmm. You know, whether you're going to keep it in, uh, in a, you know, keep it refrigerated or whatnot, you know, away from moisture. So there are definitely ways of, uh, of doing it. And of course, once it's, uh, you know, it, um, you mix it with water any issue disappears almost instantly. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, you know, we're releasing right now the product Kumite, which is designed for uh, for combat athletes and uh, for those that want to increase the endurance. And it's a phenomenal product. And, uh, you know, I have to thank you for it because you helped me quite a bit with your advice and guidance. And uh, <laughs> I really Thanks. appreciate it um, because I think this product, as good as it is, um, is definitely you have a huge, huge part in it, and I'm really grateful for that. Um, oh, thanks, Robbie. That uh, that means a lot, man. I appreciate being able it, to well, just be an honor to help. And uh, we're releasing the new flavor of uh, our popular protein, so it's going to be peanut butter cookie. That's coming out in October. And then, last but not least, we're re-releasing Assassin under Anarchy Labs. And you already seen the formula, so you know what we're talking about. I mean, pretty much... Uh, you know, 
Yeah, it's going to blow people out of the water. I, mean, if they I, yeah, I don't like even know how to describe it because, I mean, there is absolutely nothing that comes even close to it. No, and I mean, you've been leaking ingredients steadily through Fitness Deals News on uh, online, so people can check out TJ over there for some of the sneak peeks of what uh, Anarchy Labs has cooking. And so when, at what juncture did you decide to, because not many brands, actually have a sister company. So what led you to shoot off into a, a subsidiary company as well? Again, um, you know what? Uh, a lot of manufacturers don't didn't want to deal, even before the ban, didn't want to deal with such things as DMAA and stuff like that. Um, I like DMA. I think it was a great ingredient, and uh, but it was just a matter of time before it's going to get banned. So Apollo Nutrition... Uh, quote unquote is the clean line that we have more. I mean, I don't know if 600 milligram of caffeine you can call clean. It's still very, very controversial, but, um, you know, we didn't put DMAA. We didn't use DMHA. We didn't use none of those funky ingredients. So for that was created Anarchy Labs because again, there was demand for it. There is demand for it. So we decided to release three products under that brand. And one of them was Assassin, which had DMAA and was extremely popular. Once DMAA got banned, we decided, you know, uh, I know there are some uh, some companies that still uh, doing the whole DMAA thing, but uh, I'm not one of those. If it's banned, it's banned. So the question was, do we release Assassin again because of such popularity, or do we say goodbye to it? And I was thinking of shutting down Anarchy Labs completely and focusing only on Apollo Nutrition. But then when we started playing a little bit with formulas, etc., and again, I consulted with you, and you helped me with that too, the, the whole thing was, can we make Assassin without DMA, but being just as strong or possibly stronger? And I do think that based on formula and based on few people that tried it, I think we succeeded. So uh, that's the reason why Assassin is coming out, and that's the reason why Anarchy Labs is staying as is. And we might actually add a few more products to the brand. Really? Expand that out, Anarchy? Uh, yeah, I think that there is demand. You know, Shogun is very popular. Warrior is very popular. It's a great uh, testosterone booster product. Shogun is uh, a great fat burner, and it's completely different from Chaos. Um they have their market, they have demand. So, um, you know, if we're going to figure out something uh, to add to Anarchy Labs that's going to be along the lines of uh, the products that we have right now, then I see no issues why we would not release it. Mm-hmm. Now, for the, uh, the the guys out there listening, I think they would be surprised to learn that as, as many stimulants and things that you have going on in the Anarchy Labs products, the flavoring on those is phenomenal. I mean, for a high stem product that uses you know, crazy amounts of just about all the, uh, the, the fun compounds, as I'll call them. It's the, it, you, you manis, mastered the, uh, flavoring game really, really well with those. You know what? And it came as a surprise to me too, because initially when the whole idea with Apollo Nutrition came on Anarchy Labs, my idea was fuck what it tastes like. We just want to put out a quality product. Right. Uh, again, it's a rookie mistake because, uh, now I know that uh, flavor and taste, they do matter. They matter a lot. Uh, labels do matter. So, you know, when we realize that we have a couple of products that taste really good, like our protein tastes absolutely ridiculous. It's delicious. And uh, so now the, the taste is of a huge importance to me. So I make sure before we release any product that uh, I give samples to the members of the gym and I get the feedback. And I want nothing but overwhelming positive response otherwise it's a no-go so right now when it comes to taste i'm extremely extremely focused on that and i'm making sure that it tastes really good and uh it surprised me that both hooligan and the new assassin taste pretty good for a pre-workout considering that the first batches of hooligan and assassin tasted horrible (laughs) i think i think maybe five or ten years ago in the industry you could probably get away with you know, a mediocre flavored product so long as the formula was exceptional and it performed really well. But the flavoring technology and the the flavoring houses in the industry have come so far recently that there's no reason to not have a fantastic performance pre-workout that also tastes as good as the performance lives up to. It's just, there's no reason that if you are, you're just, you're skirting one end or the other and you're just, you're willing to sacrifice quality. So it's good to see that you're equally focused on making a great tasting product and a product that actually is dosed well too. 
Well, you know, uh, we just came back from the Olympia, and uh, as we were making rounds at the expo, I paid attention to, I tried, I sampled a lot of products by different companies, and I was shocked by the overwhelming number of products that taste horrible. Mm -hmm. They still do. And considering you're right, I mean, the technology and everything that we have today, it's not that hard to make a good tasting product. It's right. not that challenging. So if anyone says, you know what, it's 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 challenging and it's close to impossible and this ingredient and that ingredient, bullshit. Ninety percent of the time you can get a good tasting product. Yeah, I would say with there's a few exceptions that are gonna make taste extremely challenging. I would say tea cream, dynamine, and uh Pico two, those are probably the three most challenging yeah, the ingredients two, on the market right now. Yeah, Pico oh. two is the is the main ingredient in Kumite, and uh, the whole idea was initially to have it in a powder form. But once I tried it, I didn't even want to play with it. I said it's so disgusting. There is no way we need to make this in a pill form. I'm not even going to try. Yeah, and for for those out there listening, Pico two is a uh, it's a patented blend of mushrooms that uh, enhances, it's an adaptogenic blend of mushrooms, which is going to enhance oxygen utilization, VO2 max, uh, ATP production in the body. But it's since it comes from ground up mushrooms, it, it basically tastes like dirt uh, in your pretty mouth. Much. It has so. the color of dirt, too. Yeah, it's it's definitely a, it, when you put it in your mouth, it just, it sucks away all the moisture. And it's, I don't know if you've just tried the raw powder by itself, but I've got a tub of it here at our place. And it just, man, it's like sucking on like raw cookie dough or raw, like bread dough well, or something. Initially, the manufacturer, the manufacturer sent me the powder form, and I was like, a hell no. I mean, it, <laughs> and I can tolerate a lot of things, but there is no way I'm drinking this on a daily basis. Yeah, and I, I don't blame you. I don't think I don't think most people would either. The, the few products that I have tried that use it in the powdered form, they're not anywhere near the best tasting products on the market. Absolutely agreed, you know, and that's the reason why I'm going to make sure that, you know, that the taste and everything that we make um, – is still um, the best possible. And, uh, you know, right now, taste is actually one of the most important things to me. Of course, formulas come first because I want to make sure that we stay competitive, we stay ahead of the competition. And the reason, like, some of my uh, team members are actually upset with me because I keep changing the formulas <laughs> constantly. And I tell them it's not because I want to. It's something that I, I can I can't. It's just the competitive spirit in me. I can't bear the fact that somebody can make a better product or a stronger product, especially considering that we associate it with a pollen gym, a hardcore gym, one of the best gyms in the country. So if it comes to a hardcore premium supplement, we have to be the best, and it is a competition. We are competing for the hardcore market and for hardcore consumer, and they demand nothing but the best, and that's my job to give them that. And when I heard of from one... Uh, from the owner of one, of one company that we don't have to mention the name, and he told me once that he's not going to compete with me because I'm crazy. I thought that was the biggest compliment. <laughs> he realizes his strengths, and he, he realizes that yeah, you've got he yours, too. He says, after 600 milligrams of caffeine, he says, you're insane. He says, I'm not even going to try to compete with you, and I took it as the biggest compliment. I, I could see that. Now, with those the high stim doses and the, the people that – you know, you interact with on a, a daily, weekly, or monthly basis. Have you ever gotten any kind of negative reaction from the athletes? So they complain of, you know, headaches or feeling overstimmed or severe energy crashes when taking that much caffeine? Or You know what? Honestly, uh, I'll be lying if I said that there was no negative response. There was, but nothing substantial. The only things that I've got, and this is we're talking about like once or twice, uh, we're talking about the fact that some people said like, oh, I took it late in the day and I couldn't sleep at night. Um, I don't really see it as anything really bad, but it, I mean, it is, uh, you know, it's, it's something that, that did happen and uh, I'll be honest. Yeah. A headaches. No, I haven't heard anything about headaches. What I did hear was about the fact that, you know, taking it too late or later in the day can interfere with your sleep. And I mean, obviously rightfully so I'm not surprised. So that was yeah, the only yeah. thing, or I heard from some Few again, very very few individuals considering our market where people said that it's too strong. I can handle only half a scoop, which is fine too. Again, I don't see it as a criticism. I see it as a fact because, like I said earlier, 600 milligrams of caffeine is not for everybody. No, and that's and it. So those are the only quote unquote un, uh, you know negative reactions. But that's it. Perfect. And I think most people. I mean, most of the people working out at your gym are bigger guys anyway, so they're probably 200 pounds and over. 
And so yeah, and I'd like to say there are people who are handling two scoops of hooligan. Yeah, and if once you get into that size of individual, I mean, the the research backed amounts of caffeine for actual performance enhancements are as anywhere from three milligrams per kilogram to six milligrams per kilogram. So if you got a two two hundred and fifty pound person, you know, they can handle a lot of caffeine, if, especially if they want to get the actual ergogenic benefits of caffeine. I think this is the best promotion. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> it's a fact. And if you had to pick one product in your lineup, that's your baby. That's the one you're most proud of. Do you have one? Oh, wow. Uh, woof. Um, you know what? I probably don't, but if I had to absolutely pick one, it probably would be whole again. I do believe that that's the product that put us on a map. Mm -hmm. It got the most attention when it comes to both positive and negative. And I think that um, that's probably our, you know, flagship product. So I'm pro it probably deserves a little bit more respect than anyone else. Yes, I for the the listeners out there, I've only I only usually go up to a half scoop, and I'll I'll do a half serving of that with the bare knuckle because I just I'm typically a higher energy individual and don't need a, you know a crap ton of caffeine right before I work out, but. You know, I think I think it's great that that option is there, and it it stacks seamlessly with hooligan bare knuckle for those out there. But if I, you know, I would say the one I think is, is that people need to be aware of is the protein. If if they haven't tried your fifty fifty protein, they're missing out on probably one of the best flavored uh, protein blends there is on the market. And uh, the article that you wrote about the benefits of uh, isolate and casein, I think that was one of the best articles that I've read. Because believe it or not, that um, there are still people who think that uh, isolate alone is superior to any other form of creatine. And not only that, believe it or not, I also ha I heard from uh, a professional bodybuilder who owns uh, a supplement store mm -hmm. that uh, isolate and casein is bad for you, you know, and um, that apparently wow. you can gain weight from it. So if you're dieting, you have to strictly use, he didn't even say isolate, he said whey protein. So I told him, I said, so whey protein isolate or concentrate? He said, it doesn't matter as long as it's whey protein. So, you know, there's still so much misconception. There's still so much in terms of people don't know and these so-called experts that give just wrong advice and that's how it starts. People are buying uh, whey protein left and right, whether it's isolate or concentrate, that is a crappy concentrate, um, and they think that they're buying superior protein. So do I think that uh, our combination is superior? Yes, I do. And your article just proved that. And there is an actual data research behind that that proves that as well. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't know. And when it comes to taste, um, obviously, you know, it, it, it comes as a no surprise that I'm going to say that our protein is the best tasting protein, protein on the market. But I really do believe so because I've tried a lot of proteins and I'm yet to try something that tastes as good. And there are a couple of them that are actually, they do taste good. Jim Stepani's protein tastes very good. Uh, at least some of the flavors that I tried, mm -hmm. but I still think that ours tastes absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely, I, I, you yours was the first one to make me a believer that strawberry flavored protein was possible because I've had so many candy sweet strawberries and just artificial tasting ones. Now, granted, they're using artificial sweeteners and artificial flavors in a lot of these proteins, but still, it's got that synthetic processed flavor where the uh, the Apollon strawberry, it, it's like strawberry quick or something. I mean, it tastes like legitimate strawberry milk you would have when you were a kid. I agree, and I'm not a strawberry and I'm not a chocolate kind of person, yet both flavors I absolutely love. Yeah. Now, with the peanut butter cookie flavor that y'all are getting ready to release, uh, did was that just a personal one that you wanted to do, or are you getting no, demand not at for all. peanut I butter? Actually, I actually didn't want to do it at all. That was my preference not to do it at all because – uh, I tried peanut butter a couple of times and I absolutely, well, I didn't say, I can't, I can't say that I hated it, but I didn't like it. I didn't like it from other companies. I just didn't like the flavor. And then, uh, our, um, new athlete, Juan Diesel Morel, IFBB Pro, he was talking to me about the fact how much he likes peanut butter and he made a, he made a suggestion that we should release one. Um, I honestly didn't even consider it 
until I talked to our manufacturer and uh, he asked me if I'm planning to release any other flavors. And I said, uh, not right now. And I said, although it was suggested to me about peanut butter, he says, so let me give it a try with your formula mm -hmm. to, to make you a peanut butter sample. And I basically said, yeah, whatever. A few days later, he sent me a sample and there was a bunch of us at the gym and we tried it and I absolutely loved it. And everybody who tried it, they went just crazy for it. I took it to one and uh, every day or every other day, he would send me a message when it's going to be ready. So we immediately placed an <laughs> order and uh, we're releasing it in October. And uh, Rich Velucci, who works for, you know, he runs our marketing department. Um, he said that it tastes like peanut butter cookies. So hands the name. Perfect. All right. That was, that was going to be my next question. Is it more like a peanut butter cookie like you would get baked or is it like a Reese's peanut butter I've cup? Not, kind of flavor? I've so it's, even it's... had peanut butter cookie in my life. I never mm -hmm. even tried it, but I do trust Rich. And he said it tastes like a uh, peanut butter cookie. I'm like, okay. He says, that's what we have to call it. I'm like, okay, no objections. Peanut butter Perfect. cookie. Yes. That works. I, I don't think I, I know of a person on the planet that doesn't like the, the flavor of peanut butter. Not they might be allergic to peanuts, but you know, it's a uh, peanut butter flavored things are delicious. And so yeah, I'm, I'm very excited to see that release. Yeah, we, we're going to have it in a few weeks. And I'm super excited because I, I genuinely love the flavor. It really tastes absolutely amazing. I, I think because chocolate is our number one seller, but I think it's going to give chocolate the run for its money. Excellent. All right. So continuing on with the, uh, manufacturing side of the thing, since you're bringing out these high stem hardcore products, have you ever gotten, you know, pushback from the manufacturers saying, you know, maybe we don't feel so comfortable making this for you Honestly, at all? Or? Yes, once. Yeah. Once. They're concerned just that it was a liability. Yeah. The one manufacturer told me that he's not going to make uh, 600 milligram caffeine. Um, he doesn't feel comfortable doing it. Um, and, but again, I, it is what it is. I, I can understand some people are not going to want to do something that's high stem. Again, we're not doing anything that is illegal. We're not doing anything that is against the law. We're not using any banned substances. We're not using any dosages that are above, you know, what's allowed. Like, for example, uh, we are bringing our products now to Russia and Russia only allows 200 milligram caffeine per serving. So the Russian version of Hooligan is going to contain 200 milligram um, uh, of caffeine. Why? Because that's what's allowed. So we're not going to break the law. Do I think that it's uh, kind of takes away from what Hooligan represents? Yes, of course I do. But we have to obey by the law and we have to follow the rules and that's just the way it is. So when I say that we have uh, we have a market for people that take high stem products, we actually do. And again, we're not trying to go uh, after everyone. We're not trying to be one of those giants like VSN and Optimum Nutrition and Ultimate Nutrition and all those companies. God bless them. I, mean, I, I wish them nothing but success. I don't want to manufacture products that they manufacture. I don't want to manufacture anything that they manufacture. <laughs> not <Yeah>. even close. <laughs> it's just not my thing. And I think if I did, that my small percentage of my followers would absolutely kill me. You know, they, they would be very, very unhappy with me because they would think that I'm that I'm cutting corners. Mm -hmm. I had an investor um, getting in touch with me that he wanted to come on board as, you know, with Apollo Nutrition. And uh, again, I don't want no investors. We, we're doing fine as is. But we entertained that idea because the company is growing and a couple of months ago. And he came basically and he said, you know, I'm going to invest. You do whatever you think is best. I like the idea and I entertained that idea, but our second meeting, he told me, you know what, um, you have uh, products that are very expensive to manufacture, which we do. Mm -hmm. um, he it's says a premium product. Yeah. yeah, I mean, maybe he says we can scale down on some of the dosages and make it a little bit cheaper. And that was an automatic no, you know, and that's where even the idea of him coming on board immediately disappeared because... I'm not going to cut corners. Every I promise that from day one, every supplement that I'm going to make, every time I'm going to release uh, the product, like say, something like Hooligan, you can go back and check every Hooligan that we released. And just by looking at the label, you will be able to tell, oh, wow, this is more expensive to manufacture than the previous one. And we know, both of us know of companies that release the product, 
And then a couple of months or a couple of years later, they scaled down and actually watered it down and, uh, you know, basically capitalized on a good name that they built. And they started uh, started co cutting corners and selling shit. Correct. And that's that's one of the problems, especially if a company is using a prop blend that most of the, the listeners may not be aware of, is that just because the prop blend, the total gram dosage remains the same from one product run to another, doesn't mean that they can't tweak the dosages within that. So if one time they're giving you, you know, for instance, six grams of citrulline malate and a prop blend, but the next run, even though it's still on the label, it might only be a gram or two because they're trying to cut corners and save money. And a lot of people don't pay attention to the labels and they think, oh, wow, I had a great product and, uh, you know, I'm going to continue buying that product. And they're not even aware that all of a sudden, quietly, without any notice, the product changed. Exactly. They, they keep buying it. Um, again, we've seen a lot of companies. Another thing is, is uh, you can go on social media and there is a lot of advertising for certain companies where they, you know, spend $50 or $100 and get free this, free that, free this, free that. And it's like free shipping, free gifts. And, you know, at the end of the day, you calculate, wow, is this company making any money? They do. Why? Because they releasing shitty products that costs nothing to manufacture. That's the only way they can allow themselves to do that. Mm -hmm. So, and the consumer automatically doesn't, you know, we had somebody at the gym uh, walking in with, uh, with a t-shirt from a different company and we just asked him like, do you use their products? He says, yeah, because they gave me so much free stuff all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, that's nice to have extra t-shirts and extra hoodies and extra, you know, accessories. It's excellent. I mean, who doesn't like free shit? Right. But at the same time, you have to ask yourself, if the company is able to give you that much free, how much does the product cost? Because there is no way they're doing it at loss. Correct. Yeah. They're, they're using either cheap ingredients, underdosed ingredients, or, yeah, I have no idea. Or they're running in the red on purpose for whatever reason. And we both know that those companies usually don't last too long. No, but not at all. Sooner or later, something does happen where it triggers people to question that. And, uh, you know, I mean, if the company gets a bad rap, that's like a like a bad virus. It spreads very quickly. Agreed. Agreed. Um, so I would say, what is the if five years from now, where do you see a pollen? And, you know, what's the forecast for the next three to five years? Um, you know what, TJ asked me that question once and I said, we're going to, we're going to own NutriBio. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, obviously that was a joke, but, uh, uh, you know what? Let me change that strategy a little bit. We're going to own both NutriBio and Jim. <laughs> You're going to have two bald guys on your ass now. You're going to have Mark. Yeah, well, at least I'm going to be the best looking out of three. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's, so I, I think that would be fun because both you and Mark have uh, martial arts backgrounds. So Mark is karate, I believe. Yeah. And yours is Muay Thai. Do you do any other styles as well? No, mostly Muay Thai, kickboxing, a little bit of boxing. You know, I suck on the ground. So, so no grappling or... Uh, no, 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 no. I would get my ass handed to me probably by my daughter. <laughs> How long have you been training Muay Thai? Actually, you know what? Not that long. Uh, today I came across a picture from uh, seven years ago when I was still, you know, lifting weights and doing all that good stuff. So I would say uh, Muay Thai probably for about seven years. I started pretty late. I started at 36. And uh, I would say 20, 25 years ago, I was doing boxing. So I had a huge gap where I didn't do anything. And then... Um, I decided to, to do Muay Thai and, you know, and I gave it my all. It's just, that's the way I do things. When I, uh, set my mind on so onto something, I give everything I have. And plus, you know, the fact that people would doubt me and people would think that I'm too old or too this or too that, uh, and usually things like that only fire me up even more. Yeah. And so the, the people listening, they might not know, but you've actually fought professionally and competitively in Muay Thai, isn't that right? Yeah, I did. The last one was in Thailand, um, November 2017. Yeah, I remember. And I was there. How does that work when you're trying to run the business, keep uh, keep on formulations and manufacturing, and train seriously for a uh, competition? How do you balance those? I'll be lying if I'll say that it's easy because it's not. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, um, 
as much as uh, actually my coach got mad at me today for saying that I'm old, even jokingly. But uh, the fact remains is that, uh, yeah, I am, I am in my early 40s and, uh, you know, it takes a little bit more to stay in shape and it takes a little bit more to help with recovery and all that. And, of course, running a business, uh, being a father, having a family, um, it's, it's, it's definitely very, very challenging when you have to train two to three times a day. But I'm very, very fortunate with people that I have around me. Um, they help me out. We definitely have each other's back. Uh, we fight behind the scenes nonstop, but we truly <laughs> love each other and we support each other. And, uh, you know, you already met Alina, so you know the friendship and what goes behind the scenes. So you've seen it all. Um, it's just uh, I'm very fortunate that there are people who are even, uh, I mean, People on my team, they're not really happy with the fact that, uh, you know, that I'm still competing or was competing yeah. um, because they look out for my safety and they obviously love and care about me. But at the same time, um, they all know that I'm extremely stubborn. And if I say I'll do it, I'll do it. There is no way of stopping me. Uh, so I get nothing but support and, uh, you know, and like I said, they genuinely care. They will cover for me. They will do things to help me out. So, uh, you know, I, I can't really complain. I'm, I'm really blessed. Yeah. Are there any, uh, fights on the docket, you know, in the next year or two that you're training for, actively training for, or is that just kind of a, a TB determined? Um, you know, I, I said, um, after last year that I'm so burnt out and I'm, I um, probably have to focus more on my on my company and things like that, and I'm pretty much probably done. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, after about a month or two of not training, I genuinely missed it, and I really believe that last year was my best, my all-time best. I felt like I'm still getting better, and I felt because in terms of the fight years, I'm still young. You know, I'm, I haven't been doing it for 20-plus years. Right. So... Uh, I felt like I kept improving and uh, it almost like hit me that I'm kind of interrupting pro uh, progress and uh, you know I still have it in me I still I can I still think that I can compete and I can still deliver and uh, <laughs> I actually got myself quite a few fans which is also a nice thing so uh, I think that I'm not going to say that uh, I I, I close chapter on this one but uh I'm definitely open to fighting again, and um, as of right now, there is a possibility that I will fight in 2019, and I am actively training. In fact, in about two hours, I have uh, a training session with my coach, So, <laughs> and then tomorrow morning, I'm already scheduled for my boxing uh, you know, session. So I keep training. I keep still, you know, I still keep active, and I still uh, try and uh, to improve as much as I can. So uh, fighting is definitely not out of the question. Um, I keep it TBT, like you said. Gotcha. Uh, you mentioned that sometimes you're training two or three times a day. What are the, the actual different training sessions that you're involved in? Well, mostly I'm a type of guy that doesn't have, um, at least I didn't have good cardio. So for me to be in shape, it's always very, very challenging. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that, uh, you know, obviously running and uh cardiovascular training at least uh, four or five times a week. And then on top of it, then I have my sessions with my coaches one-on-one, -on -one, which is basically, you know, that's training and, uh, you know, hitting the mitts and then sparring. So all in all, it comes to two to three times a day, five, six days a week, um, you know, dividing those sessions and depends where I have to be at the time because I also train in different locations. Oh, okay. So it's not all on site at uh, no, the no, gym. no, no, no. There, there. I mean, uh, I have three or four coaches that constantly help me. Um, you know, everybody serves a certain purpose. Um, so it's uh, it's definitely something that takes a lot of my time because, especially driving wise, you know, sometimes it takes me an hour and a half just to get to the gym, and you know, then training, then another hour and a half to go back. So it's like four or five uh, hours out of my day just for one training session. Yeah, it's a little, that can make for a very long day, especially when you put it's in the other training session. And then I, I, I call my car my office, so pretty much everything is done from my car. I'm on, constantly on the phone. Yeah. And thank God I know a lot of police officers, so, uh, you know, I don't get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can you can uh, 
push the upper edge on the uh, speed. Yeah, I just hate Bluetooth, so I, it's it's like one of my pet peeves. I hate Bluetooth, so I always uh, I know it, it's not something that I should be bragging about because you know don't talk on the phone while you're driving. But unfortunately, that's one of my problems. Yeah, yeah. Well, everybody's got everybody's got their own vices and, and exactly. Whatnot, so. Excellent. All right. So let me see. What let's uh what is one of your let's go through a couple of your biggest gripes with the supplement industry. Just something that it just isn't you know just something that nags you and you wish if you had a magic wand you would get rid of it. Okay. Uh, proprietary blends. That's number one. I hate them. And whenever I hear somebody saying yeah, but it's a secret formula or stuff like that, it drives me absolutely insane because I know it's a lie. Uh, the guy who says that, he is lying too, and he knows he's lying. Uh, so when people say we're protecting our formulas and, you know, and the ingredients and blah, 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 well, that bullshit drives me insane because, uh, you know, when I, when I see somebody spends $40 on a pre-workout that says proprietary blend, it just drives me absolutely insane. I still hate it. I still don't agree with it, and I never will. And no matter what anyone says or how they defend the proprietary blend industry, I will never agree with it. So to me, proprietary blend should have a definition in a, in a dictionary called garbage. <laughs> that, that's what it is. It's garbage. Um, in terms of... Um, what else I don't like? I don't like the fact that there is every pre-workout that is released called the best pre-workout on the market. Are you fucking kidding me? You're releasing some shitty product and you're calling it the best pre-workout on the market. You know, all it takes is just to look at your label and I can see that it's a garbage label. It's, per you know, it's all crap. So you claiming it. I mean, you know what? Back up your claim. Back yeah. it up. How, how are you going to back it up? By just saying it? By calling it best on the market? You know, or, you know, you're giving somebody a free tub and that person says, oh, this shit is the best. You know, it's a lie. It's a lie. And I'm not going to say that, uh, you know, that the whole again or assassin are the best pre-workouts on the market. No, they're the best pre-workout in their own category. You know, in terms of like a hardcore pre premium uh, uh, supplements, um, we definitely are probably the best. But again, for our own target audience, for our own target market, you know, I'm not going to say, you know, another product is bad. No, it's not bad. It, uh, everybody has, even proprietary blend crap, they have their own market too. So maybe because of the cost or the taste, they're the best in their own right. God bless them. Don't give a shit. You know, I mean, it is what it is. But for me, you know, you're saying you're the best. You're best, you're best based on what? I'm looking at your label and your label is borderline shit that you know that costs three or four bucks to make and yet you're charging people 40 bucks and plus you're giving them a free t-shirt that costs you eight bucks you know and you're giving them free shipping that costs you another six or seven dollars you're still making two three hundred percent profit and you yeah. think it's the best no you're selling shit so i'll always have a problem with the fact that you know everybody says i'm the best on the market no specify why you're the best you're best for who like I know, for example, Kumite is going to be the best product for uh, for endurance athletes and for fighters. Mm -hmm. Hooligan is not. Hooligan is definitely not good for fighters. Some fighters love it. Great. You know, but in my opinion, it's not the best product for fighters because when I clinch and I get that pump in my hands, you know, uh, in, in my arms, I feel like my shoulders are swelling up with pump and everything else, and I get tired fairly quickly. So yeah, it's going to reduce range of motion, too, and it's going to make it more difficult to... Exactly. So Hooligan is definitely not the best product when it comes to certain people. Kumite is not the best probably for, you know, for somebody else. You know, but again, if you're doing endurance, if you're doing uh, strength and conditioning, if you're doing CrossFit, if you're doing fighting, then Kumite is absolutely phenomenal. So I'm not going to lie to people and say, oh, well, you know what, Kumite is the best pre-workout on the market. No, it's not. It's the best in what it does. Mm -hmm. And I made sure because there are a couple of products that are similar or claiming to be the best uh, products for cardio, but Kumite is better. And why? Because I actually list the ingredients on a label, because I actually list the dosages on a label, because I back up what I'm saying. So I'm not lying to people and saying, like, you know what, take this product because it's hands down the best. No, it's best in its own right. So I will never agree with that, and it's something that will always piss me off. 
Or same thing as, uh, oh, take whey protein. Whey protein is the best form of protein. No, it's not. It's not. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it takes, you know, a click on Google to find out that it's not the best. And consumers should be a little bit more aware of what they're putting in their body and do a little bit more research because they have responsibility themselves for their kids, for their health. It's not, only, it's, it, it's not only us who are selling the products and saying, oh, you know what, we have the best shit. No, we don't. Nobody has the best. You know, let the consumer identify what's the best. And why don't you educate the consumer about the ingredients and the dosages and what's good and what's not? Then you can claim that you're at least have not only that you want to make money and, you know, you're a businessman and you're running a business, but you're also a noble man. You're a good man. Yeah, because I, I think, think that's at the a... end of the day, that works out. Right. And I would agree. And I, I still think most people don't realize that just because the company, but yeah has a product with their name on it doesn't mean they're actually formulating it. I would say seven or eight times out of 10, they're going to some contract manufacturer and the contract manufacturer is giving them a formula and say, Hey, you know, give me $10,000 and we'll run X amount of bottles for you with a shiny label on it. You can say it's yours. Well, that's the case. That's the case most of the time, unfortunately. But uh, you know what? They don't care. They, they want to make a quick buck. And then you have, uh, you know, um, I like the way you review products and the way, you analyze them, and I love the job that TJ is doing, um, but let's face it, not everybody is like that. You have a few of those, you know, independent review companies who are, let's face it, they're getting paid to say the shit that they say. Yeah. They're getting paid. They're not honest, because when I see somebody, you know, who apparently is an expert in supplement industry, and he has a, a website that designed to review products, and he says... Oh, this stuff is absolutely amazing. And I know he's lying. There are a lot of people that know he's lying. So either he's imbecile who doesn't know anything, or he got paid. I'm actually going to say he probably got paid. You yeah, know, I mean, they get paid for advertising and all kinds of things like that. So Yeah, but, but it's not an independent review. It's a lie. Yeah. If it's a true, honest, independent review, I understand everybody wants to make money. You know, if you're getting paid to advertise a certain product, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. You're getting paid. You know, that's that's fine. That's just the way of things. That, that's how everything works out. People get paid to perform a job, and if your job is to lie, <laughs> then, then I guess that's fine too. But don't call <laughs> yourself independent because you're not independent. Independent is independent. And when you say, oh, this is the best tasting protein on the market – and then I give it to a couple of people in my gym because I'm like, hold on a second. Am I missing something? Because to me, a pollen tastes better than this shit. So I go to the members of the gym and I buy the product at Vitamin Shop. I bring it to the gym and I actually don't show them the name of the product and the name of the brand. And I just make protein shakes for 10 people at the gym. And I'm like, try this. What do you think? Oh, my God, this is garbage. This tastes like shit. Yeah. Oh, this just won the best tasting protein on the market. And they're like, you're kidding me. Nope. That's the best tasting product on the market. You know, to me, that's not something that should be within this industry. In this industry, you know, we're talking a lot about fixing things. We'll start with proprietary plans. Reveal your formulas. Let's see how much of certain ingredients you're putting in a, in a supplement, in your supplements. Because, for example, caffeine costs nothing. It's very, very cheap. But something like citrulline, it's very expensive ingredient. Mm -hmm. So when you're putting a thousand milligram in a proprietary blend, you're not spending that much money. But we know that you know the ideal number is what three to six thousand. Why don't you put that amount, three to six thousand milligram, and let's see and reveal the formula, and let's see how much honestly you're putting in your formula, because we know that that's going to drive the cost of your product way up. So now you're hiding behind a proprietary blend and people think, oh, my God, I got a kick. Yeah, because you got like five or six hundred milligram of caffeine that hooligan is getting blamed for by certain people. Mm -hmm. But you just had it in proprietary blend and that's all you felt, the fucking caffeine. There was nothing else in it. Just caffeine. Cheap caffeine that costs nothing. Yeah, the stimulant matrix that companies use, I don't, I don't think most consumers are aware. That is the cheapest thing. That is the cheapest portion of a pre-workout or just any, any product, fat burners included too. It's, it's all the other ergogenics. And especially if you go for the trademark patented ones like, uh, Glycer Pump or Teacrine, Dynamine, Pico 2. It's, it's when you start getting into those that the cost rise substantially. And especially if you use the full dose of them.
Uh, absolutely, and that's the reason why nobody wants to do them. There, there is a handful of companies, again, they're actually honest companies, and they do produce great products. But you know what? They say that there are so many companies, and uh, this market is saturated. No, it's not. It's not. There is actually, what, five, ten honest companies? Or maybe yeah, that might even honest. be pushing it. Yeah. You know, but, but other than that, you have a market full of shit, absolute garbage. You have store owners that are lying too because they're getting great, um, you know, um, markup on products. They're getting products at 60, 70, 80 uh, percent of uh, of the of their value, and they're making unbelievable margins. So somebody walks into the store, somebody who is clueless, and says, "What's the best?" And I've I watched, I actually seen it with my own eyes. What's the best fat burner? Oh, this one. This one is absolutely phenomenal. Take it. It's great. And then I look at the formula, and I know that product costs probably 2 or $3 to make, and they just sold it for 40 45 bucks, and then they probably got it for 10 Yeah, and the store owners are probably getting a commission, so they're going to push certain brands over the others. And all that. So, you know, the store owners are lying. They're absolutely lying. And like I said, again, not everybody, not everybody. Um, I'm actually fortunate to deal with a couple of stores that are absolutely phenomenal. Mm-hmm. You know, and they are actually advising to the uh, to the customers to buy good products. But is everybody doing it? No, not everybody. Some of them just want to make sure that they make a quick buck. Again, nothing wrong with making money, but I think you're far off. You're better off uh, being honest with your customer. I really believe when you sell them a shitty product, sooner or later they will realize that it's a shitty product. Oh yeah, I mean, and then they're going to stop trusting your opinion or stop coming to your store entirely. Absolutely. And so, you know, when we're saying that there is only proprietary blend or no, there is no proprietary blend. There is proprietary blend is just the beginning of a problem. There is a lot of problems, including Jim Stepani, who comes on and does videos bashing everybody. You know, you do have great, uh, great products. Excellent. Focus on that. Focus on the fact that you have great products while you're bashing everybody. Not only that, you're bashing actually good companies. Why? Because you know that proprietary blend crap doesn't stand a chance against you. So you're trying to take out your competition by bashing them. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to bash Nutribuy. I'm not going to bash Jim when it comes to his supplements, his work ethic. So the way he approaches things, I think it's absolutely ridiculous and I think it's wrong. Yeah. But uh, in terms of his products, great products, great company, excellent. Man behind the product, asshole. Oh man, that 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 was awesome, Robbie. That was, well, that you know, awesome. and like I said, I'll be more than happy to say it to his face. Yeah, an asshole. an asshole with good products. You know, I don't even need to. There are some people who are actually nice people. They have shitty products. He's an asshole with great products. There you go. <laughs> it, 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 it's a fact. So you know what? I mean, at the end of the day, everybody's trying to make money, and I. Um, I definitely understand that we work our asses off to make money, you know, provide better living for our loved ones. And uh, that is absolutely okay with me. And that's the way it should be. But, you know, at some point, the lies and bullshit, they have to stop because I think that's the reason why we see companies go out of business within a year, two, three, five. Why? Because sooner or later, people know that it's bullshit. Yeah. Or you've got companies that release a version of a pre-workout and then, you know, six months later, it's a brand new pre-workout that they're redubbing as their next hardcore pre-workout. And then another six months later, after that batch is sold out, they'll release another pre-workout and title it something different and include some other strange compound that'll get banned in another two months. And it's just, it's these kind of unsavory techniques that really just infuriate me about the industry. Yeah, and and, uh, you know what, I think that... uh... The company should be a little bit more honest with the consumers, and they should definitely listen to them. They listen to what they want, you know, um, listen what products they want, what flavors they want, and don't just give them a shitty product with a shiny label and claim that it's the best new product on the market. You know, why don't you provide some information why it's the best? Yeah, I wish. I think all companies, I wish this was just a, a regulation that they should be required to publish on their sites the the batch testing or the third party testing for every single product that they have. And the next time they run a new batch, they've got to do another round of testing or something. I wish uh, more companies would do that just in general, or everybody had to do that. I wish that was actually part of the law. 
Uh, so uh, one of the, the recent trends that's come along in the industry now has been companies uh, teaming up to do collaborations and release supplements. I know uh, Pitbull and Intel Nutra had, had teamed up to do one. Would you uh, ever consider doing one with another brand or uh, Nutra Bio or anything? Do you know what I always have um, my approach to to things is is that I'm always I don't know if I would initiate anything like that to be honest I, I'm not saying it's a bad thing not at all um, I I just don't know if it's something that I would I would personally do yeah. however if somebody approached me I'm always willing to listen to people so if somebody would approach me about doing something like that. I would definitely weigh all the pros and cons, and I would be open to it. Um, again, I don't know how successful that would be, and I don't know how exactly logistically it works out financially. Mm-hmm. But I guess everything has um, has a way of, you know, everybody can reach an agreement, I guess. If it's possible, if it's something that can benefit both brands, then why not? Like I said, we are – not all of us should be – uh, cutting each other's throats. We can definitely, there is market big enough for everybody, and I think we can peacefully compete without being assholes to each other. I would agree 100% with that. Um, do you see the, the supplement industry has been trending upwards considerably the past few years? Do you ever see it, it plateauing in the near future or in the bubble bursting, or you think it's still going to continue to grow? You know what? I think that uh, if we ask that question, you know, in the 70s, nobody would expect that we were going to be where we are today. Mm -hmm. So I think this is just probably what we have today is nothing compared to what this industry or any industry is going to be in the next 10 to 20 years. I think it constantly evolves. We as people, we always evolve. We always get better. So I don't think as people or as industry or any industry, we are at the maximum potential yet. I don't even think we're close. Uh, constantly new ingredients, constantly new products, constantly something more innovative. And I think that uh, we still have a long way to go. Awesome. awesome. All right. Uh, then in wrapping things up, Robbie, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you the floor to make your, if you had to give, it's this your one shining moment to give somebody a pitch to say, hey, why should they consider a pollen when they're looking for their supplement needs and then tell everybody where they can find you as well? Well, if you're looking for a cheap proprietary plant products and something that's going to save you a buck or two and uh, you care mostly about the taste and stuff, uh, you know, and um, you don't want something that is extreme, then probably a pollen is not for you. However, if you're an athlete and you deeply care about and your coach cares about what you put in your body and uh, you only want the best or you're modeling yourself after the best athletes in the world and you want to be like them, if you if you have certain goals and you want to achieve them and, uh, you know, achieving them takes, you know, uh, you have to take supplements and uh, you have to get a better body, a healthier body, a stronger body, then a pollen nutrition is definitely for you. Uh, you have to disregard the fact that we are known for 600 milligram of caffeine because <laughs> that's not the best part about a pollen. The best part about a pollen is the people behind the pollen. The best part about a pollen is the honest product that we produce. Uh, the best part about a pollen is the fact that we keep getting better and we never cut corners and never will. And that our products actually, you know, well researched. And when it comes to formulas, we always base it on a scientific research, on a medical research. And we always make sure that we proper, uh, properly dose our products. Uh, we also try our best to make sure that our products are also enjoyable in terms of taste. Uh, if that's what you're looking for, then definitely a pollen nutrition is the way to go, and I honestly don't think in that department we have any competition. And I think we're only getting started, and I think we're only going to get better. And we're willing to listen. That's number one. We're willing to listen. When people said, you know, maybe 600 uh, milligrams of caffeine is too much, and maybe, you know, do something without, uh, you know, scale it down. We didn't scale it down, but we gave them an option with a pre-workout that contains absolutely no stimulants that is still just as good. So we're always willing to listen. We're always willing to take uh, advice. And um, 
if a quality nutrition is something that, you know, that is for you based on what I said, then obviously you can find us either at a Palm Gym or online on our website, apollonutrition.com. Or, you know, today we are fortunate enough that, uh, you know, a lot of retailers decided to give us a chance. And, um, you know, you can find us at uh, some of the best uh, supplement stores. Perfect. That'll be great, Robbie. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today. And uh, we're going to do this again. <laughs> I appreciate it. It was fun.